Do you react to things naturally or do you react to things spiritually? When you think about your behavior, your conversations, every interaction and online dealing, every comment that you've ever posted, words that you have chosen to speak to other people, your spouse, your family, your kids, your neighbors who had different political signs in their yards than you. Don't you bring that up, preacher. You stay in your lane. Do you react to things naturally or do you react to things spiritually? Do you react to people in a God-centered way or in a self-centered way? How long has it been since you took the time to think about the words that you say to other people, about other people? You meditate on them, recognize their power and their significance, even pray over them. Over the last six weeks at Union Hill, before we went to online services for the next couple of weeks, we were taking an in-depth look at James 1, verse 19 and 20. It says, know this, my beloved brethren, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. These are words written to you and they're written to me. These are commands given to us as Christians. They are imperative statements. They are to be observable patterns and behaviors that are seen in your life. And these words aren't gonna mean very much to you at all. And they're not gonna cut you and expose the sin in your life unless you understand that they are being spoken directly to you. These are commands that are given to me. These are not words written so I can quote them to some loud mouthed obnoxious people in my life and they're not written to you so you can bring them up in an argument that you may be losing to your spouse or to your boyfriend or girlfriend. These are commands and words written about your life, about your behavior, about your conversations and how they either glorify God or they don't. This is to expose those places in your life where you are not being quick to listen or you're not being slow to speak and slow to anger. You, me, we are all responsible for seeing these truths as being from God. These are the standards by which we are to live and move and have our being. These are the imperatives of our online life, of our offline life. These are the commands that are to be seen when you're behind the screen, interacting online, gaming, on your phone, when you're face to face, six feet apart, of course which every week there are more and more places I am seeing myself fail at this. And just like I'm responsible for living out these commands, you are too. And as we are responsible for living out these words, so we are responsible for the sin that is produced by not following these truths. We are responsible for the sin that comes about if we do not follow these truths. Think about the sinful ways in which you have reacted this week and call it what it is. When we are not quicker to listen than we are to speak, we sin. We are tempted, as James 1.14 says, we are tempted to do something else. We are tempted to act and react differently than being quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. We are tempted to go beyond these truths because another reaction may feel better to us, to go off on someone, not pray for them. We are enticed to react and behave like we want. We are enticed to talk to people like we want and use words like we want and make comments like we want. And when we go beyond God's spoken word, we sin. We are responsible for owning up to the sin that is caused in our relationships, sin that's caused in our marriages, our friendships, our families, when we fail at these three simple yet challenging commands. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. You're responsible for living this out for letting the Word of God convict you to change you, to allow God to change you into the image of His dear Son. So let these words expose what is sinful in you, in your heart, in your mind, in your attitudes, in your conversations, in your interactions, and allow God to work on you. Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. There has to be spiritual preparation before we are going to react spiritually. Online studies like this, looking at James 1 and reading it, Bible study, worship, accountability to the others in the church, they all prepare us to have conversations with the world. They even prepare us to have conversations with people at church that may have different opinions than us. This is to prepare us for the conversations that we're going to have at home with no more than eight family members tomorrow as we gather for Thanksgiving. We're going to be tempted to go beyond. 
to fail to listen to these commands from God when it comes to every relational interaction and especially how we react to God when he speaks to us through his word. So there has to be preparation, thoughtful examination. We have to make sure the brakes work on our mouth, that our heart is filled with Christ's motives and not just our own. We have to prepare and think through our behavior with God in mind above all else. It's when we don't prepare our hearts and minds for those conversations that we're going to have with family members, that we're going to have with our spouses, that we're going to have with our kids, with people in the church, with people who post things that we may not agree with. We need to prepare so that we will not react sinfully and selfishly speak, and we won't go beyond, way beyond the first command to this verse, to be quicker to listen than we are to speak. So the, to those at Union Hill, this is your six week review for what we've gone over so far. We are all commanded to be quicker to listen than we are to speak. And if that kind of feels like a cheese grater on your heart and sandpaper on your attitude, and you feel the need to say something about this command from God in rebuttal, then you have revealed something about yourself. Something has been exposed that needs to be addressed. Because this is your responsibility. This is your command from God. This is your imperative. Be quicker to listen than you are to speak. This is not the natural way of doing things. This is not the world's imperative. This is not the world's definition. The world lives by a different standard, and we must show a difference in our mind, in our heart, in our behavior, because we're supposed to be different as Christians. The world continues to teach us that whoever is the loudest, whoever comments the most, whoever makes, uh, takes the spotlight the most, gets the most likes, whoever is quickest to, to interrupt and insert their opinion, whoever is quickest you know, in their wit to tear down another person, they win. That's the natural way, Right? But Paul says that the natural man, 1 Corinthians 2.14, does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they seem to be foolish to him. Quicker to listen than to speak is not the natural way. But it is God's way for us. It is the spiritual way. It's the wise way. And I was thinking about it like this, thinking about the context of the entirety of James 1 and how we listen to the Word of God. If you were Moses on top of smoking, thundering, miraculous power being shown everywhere Mount Sinai, and you're getting those Ten Commandments from God, hearing the voice of God, would you ever think about interrupting God mid-sentence to inject your thoughts, shouting over God? As God is saying, thou shalt not, excuse me, I have something to say. None of us would ever think about doing that. Our words would be very reverent and respectful when we're in conversation with God. And we would be very careful to examine any word we said before we chose to speak them. It should be the same way when you're speaking to anyone, interacting with anyone online or face to face, because God is right there listening to every word that you choose to say. God is right there when we're talking about someone who you think voted for the wrong person or when we're upset about the coronavirus shutdowns and frustrated about the economy or any other variable that might cause you to be quick to speak. It might cause you to be quicker to speak than you are to listen. God is right there standing beside that person you're talking to or about. And when we think about our conversations and words that way, then we would be a lot quicker to listen than we would to speak. And when we did open our mouths, we would be very prayerful and considerate in what we had to say. James is writing this to the church, to the beloved. He's seen a lot of difficulty in the church when it comes to people reacting and taking naturally selfish responses, not reacting and talking to each other spiritually or wisely. And James saw people in the first century who found it difficult and challenging to use their mouths and tongues in a godly Christ-like way. Things have not changed. Matter of fact, all you have to do is turn over to James chapter 3, and he has this very lengthy discussion about how we are to use our mouths. These truths of God have to get into every crack and crevice of our life. This word of God has to be what influences every ordinary human interaction, everything. Let every person, every person be quick to listen. And it shows up in how we behave, how we talk, how we converse, how we comment, how we tweet, what we post. It shows up in the most basic of daily behaviors, quicker to listen than we are to speak. And this one verse is a very good measure of where we are in our faith. It's a very good test of the genuineness of our faith. 
It shows us where we may have responded to someone, spoken to someone sinfully, inappropriately, selfishly. This is James bringing us all to the ultimate spiritual physician and God revealing our spiritual diagnosis. And that is that we are very prone to sin against these three commands. We don't have the power to fix this ourselves. We don't have the power within our natural self to do things like they should be done. Like James says in chapter 3, no person can tame the tongue, but God can. So be quick to listen. And then we have this, slow to speak. Speaking is just a normal human relational interaction and behavior. Normal behavior, but the way a Christian speaks, the way a Christian has conversations, especially right now, should be so different. The way we choose to speak, the way we choose to respond to the various trials of this world, even when those trials come in the form of people and conversations we have with them, they must show the fruit of our new life in Christ, the genuineness of our space, of our faith. And in our speech and in our conversations and in our online interactions and in our comments, we are to be very cautious about the words we say because we know the weight they carry. We should, as followers of God, be able to form an appropriate God-glorifying response. And what this necessitates is you being able to pump the brakes on your mouth and not react hastily and quickly to what others have said, even when it frustrates you, even when it irritates you. So let's let this simmer for a second quick to react, that we are not hasty in our words that have been spoken by others, the others that may try to test us and frustrate us and try us, but that we seek the wisdom of God before we try to insert our own, and that we answer as God would desire us to answer, that we take the time, the time to thoroughly weigh and consider what is said, who said it, the environment that we're in. A lot of people have had to repent, or maybe need to repent, of speaking and speaking too hastily. But not too many have had to repent because they've kept their mouth shut and meditated and considered the words that they're going to say. Far more times there have been a comment made you wish you could have taken back. You wish you wouldn't have written. A text you wish you wouldn't have sent. And when you prayerfully consider your response, when you concluded it was best to be quiet, the wisdom of God comes by knowing when to do both speak and to stay quiet. There are Christians that James is speaking to in this book, maybe you especially right now, who forget the power of their words and how undisciplined conversations can do irrevocable damage to our relationships. If it is your duty to speak and you have considered your response prayerfully, then speak, but speak carefully. Weighing your words, carefully watching the speed limit on the road of your conversation, like when you see a state trooper in the median and you make sure you're going slower than the limit. We'll review the classes we had on anger next week, but until then, kindly, respectfully, and thoughtfully listen to what other people may say, the questions they may ask. Do not be rash or inconsiderate in your response, but be slow to speak, weighing your words and considering their source. God bless. We'll see you on Sunday.